run an almond custom harvesting, custom spraying, management, um, farming operation. We have our own acreage. Uh, I have my own acreage. My father has his own acreage. And then we have acreage with the company as well as doing the custom work. We are located in the Turlock, Denaire, Delhi, Livingston, Houston area. We kind of spread out. I chose the almond industry, or it chose me, because it was part of my family. My grandfather did walnuts, but my father did almonds, and I grew up in it. And, and I love being outside. I love farming. I like being on a tractor. I, I like being in the orchard and outside as opposed to indoors. My first job in the almond industry was when I would get in trouble or have bad grades and had to spend time in the almond fields with my dad. We purchased the property that is now the office and my sister and I, it had um, clay rocks after they deep ripped it and we had to put, we had to put all the rocks and stuff in the front loader and get rid of all the rocks. and. My sister and I still joke about that it was like slave labor and we would be out there singing, singing songs that we learned around the 4-H camp, camp, or, uh, campfire. So that was probably the really, bo or oh, when we used to take that little tiny can and we would sprinkle the fertilizer around all the trees and you like scoop it and sprinkle and scoop it and sprinkle. Oh man, that was another really boring one. I really wanted to know the almond industry, not just my section of it. And this leadership program allowed me to do that. I got to meet people from all different aspects of it. I got to see how an almond grew from the very beginning when they first graph them, um, all the way to after it leaves my field, what they do with it, how they chop them, how they put, how they advertise for them, how they market them. We got to learn the whole entire industry. Um, and I got to learn a little bit about myself, too, in that whole process, which was good and bad. <laughs> I'm not sure I have too many hobbies. I run uh, two businesses. You could call my second business a hobby. I run our almond business, and then I also run an exotic animal rescue nonprofit, which you could call my hobby. <laughs> I rescue exotics, so not dogs and cats, lizards, snakes. Um, wild animals like porcupines and foxes and skunks and alligators. And then I utilize the live animals in educational presentations. A lot of our rescues are illegal animals that people had. We have a couple of hedgehogs that, that are that way. The alligator was found in the Stockton port. The skunk, someone... Um, illegally took out of the wild and bottle fed the owls the same thing somebody saw it in a nest and thought oh cute that'll be fun and once they've fed it for a little while it can't go back into the wild it doesn't know how to survive so then we get it probably one of my most favorite trips uh, my dad and I used to go hunting in Montana um, every November and so one year we went in June to scout out the the trails before they were covered with snow and it was gorgeous and we saw so many elk um, where we usually hunt where we see no elk <laughs> in in November but in June it was gorgeous the weather was perfect the flowers were growing and it was back you, we would ride our horses back in and nobody was back there and it was so amazing so Montana in June has been my favorite trip. I do have pets. I have my very own French Bulldog, who I love very much. She comes to work with me. I have a Great Dane and a Chocolate Lab, and two actual rescue cats. One was dumped off, and one was... I'm a sucker. I was sitting, I was sitting next to a stop sign, and we were out spraying in the middle of nowhere, and at 4 a.m. we're dropping a guy off and I hear this cat and I'm like, nope, we're not, we're not picking it up. We're not picking it up. About three hours later, he was having some difficulties and we went back past it. Sure enough, still sitting by the stop sign. And I'm like, nope, not picking it up. 
And we went to pick him up later that afternoon after he got done spraying. And I was like, fine, pull over, I'll get the cat. So, I picked up the cat. I'm such a sucker. I am very passionate about animals, obviously, and I am also passionate about farming and, and the family farm. One of the reasons that drew me back to farming was my grandfather started this. Um, he didn't start it as big as it is now. He didn't start it doing custom work, but we used to go out. I, I can remember riding the bus out to grandma and grandpa's house during walnut harvest and the whole family harvested and we all participated and grandma made dinner and we all raked and picked out sticks and um, I'm very passionate about the small family farm and um, my dad took it over and grew it a little bit bigger and my goal is to continue to take it over and get it a little bit bigger and sustain it um, and hopefully someday one of my three nephews will want to farm as well and they'll have a legacy to, to farm. I am very outgoing, but I am more introvert than a lot of people think. I can make friends anywhere. I can make friends in an elevator. I can make friends just walking down the road. But I definitely need my me time, my, my time to like um, recharge. When I went to Cal Poly, my friends used to always say, You're Tigger. How do you do it? Like my nickname was Tigger because I would just go, 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 go. But I did not live in a house full of people because... My place was my space to recharge. So I'm more min more introverted than people actually think I am because I have no problem public speaking. I, I, I grew up with that, 4-H and FFA, that's what we did. And so all of that has, has given me the ability to talk to just about anybody and make friends and do public speaking. And But I do, I do enjoy my me time. What variety of almond would I be? So I knew this question was coming and I asked people, you know, that whole like when you're getting on a dating site and they're like, what would your friends say about you? So I asked and it's pretty um, unanimous that I'm probably a hard shelled because I'm hard headed, but I'm very independent. So maybe I'm an independence because I'm very independent and I like to do things my way.